host back on the Boss Man Show, friend of the show, Coach Matt figured out he's at the UT Rio Grande Van Vaqueros in the Isle of the Wack. Not off speed anymore. Coach Fig, what's up, man? How's the weather in Edinburgh, man? Hey, hey, the weather's always nice. Uh, it, it, uh, I actually got back into town yesterday, and when I landed, it was 100 degrees. So where else in the United States is it 100 degrees at? But uh, in, in, in May, anyway. Uh, but wow. but it's, uh, it's beautiful, man. There's palm trees uh, everywhere you turn. Uh, I can go be on the beach in about an hour. Uh, right now, the honeymoon's great, man. Life's good. I hear that, man. I hear that, man. I can only imagine how busy you've been. Tell us about this, Fig. You know, you've Austin P. was very successful, man. Every year you guys won. Had a, you had a great job building that program. So tell us about why this program really stood out. You want to move to the WAC, to with the Vaqueros here in Rio Grande Valley, man. You know, I I, I uh, uh, was explaining as we was off 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 air. Um, you know, the university is only five years old, and uh, um, it's got a hunger and a passion for to become a, uh, um, a, a committed to fully committed to basketball. And it's a hidden gem. I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, just some of the things we talked about to sell. You've got you've got great weather year round. Uh, it doesn't rain. It doesn't snow. Um, you've got a metropolitan area of over two million people in the uh, Rio Grande Valley. Uh, so you've got a you've got an audience, uh, and you know the school is uh, uh, like I said five years old. It, it, it's got an enrollment of thirty three thousand students. Wow! Uh, and and during the pandemic, it grew eleven percent. So you know where where is the future of the school? Well, and, and then on top of that, you know, uh, I got a, there was a joke uh, when I took the job, you know, uh, Elon Musk uh, is, is moving down here, uh, South Padre Island. So, um, you know, I'm a pioneer, man. I'm, I'm trying to bring <laughs> revenue down, down to the valley. So, yes, um, you are. <laughs> hey, it's, no, the, the, the uh, uh, this is the next place to boom with, you know, with the modern technology. Mm -hmm. this, this is just my idiotic thinking with modern technology, with how more people are working at home, uh, why would you live in states where there's income taxes, yes. state taxes? Why live in a place where it, where it snows? Why live in a place where it rains all the time when you can come and live in the Rio Grande Valley where you've got, you've got palm trees, sunshine, the average year around temperature is 84 degrees. Man. And, and that and that is with very little humidity uh, outside of the uh, the summer months. So I'm just telling you right now, I've been here for about three, four weeks. And every night, no matter how hot it is during the day, you can sit outside and just relax and enjoy yourself. It is a it is a peaceful place to live, uh, uh, especially at nighttime. So I, all signs point to this place because the university is committed. Um, oh yes, the, the the president, the AD, everybody's committed uh, to wanting to move this program into a national uh, power, and so um, when when they chose me to be the coach, man, I, I jumped on board with it. Most definitely, and like you said, you guys are in the revamp whack now. The whack is booming now 13 schools now I, I remember the whack was really good when i was younger but now it's coming back with you guys and other schools in your, your state your state going to the whack now so tell us about the idea of how the whack rebranding now really got your attention as well well it, it's uh it, it's a twofold thing you know with the, with all the texas schools joining um and and and, and i can go through this 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 list it, you got um, you obviously got uh, Rio Grande, you got Stephen F. Austin, you got Lamar, uh, Sam Houston, Tarleton State, and uh, Avalon Christian joining. So when you start looking at things, um, guess who's the head coach at Tarleton State? The former head coach at the University of Kentucky. Yes. Texas A&M took him to the Sweet 16. Um, you know, the, the, the new coach at Lamar is Alvin Brooks, who is a legend at the University of Houston. Um, you know, you've got, uh, um, uh, Abilene Christian, the last two years that, uh, the NCAA tournament was played represented the Southland conference in, in the NCAA tournament. And then you got Stephen F. Austin where Kyle Keller's the head coach who beat Duke two years ago and won 27 games. And they went to the NCAA tournament. 
So just on the Texas side alone, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not leaving out Sam Houston, who has competed year in and year out for league titles and has made multiple NCAA tournament appearances. There's some ball coaches over in the Texas side. Oh, yes. And so then you go over into the other side of it, and you've got New Mexico State, who had won three consecutive WAC championships with Chris Jans, who had the nation's longest winning streak, I think, at one point in conference. And then uh, uh, Bryce Drew, who came from Vanderbilt, who won at Valpo, and who won the WAC tournament this past year at Grand Canyon. And Grand Canyon is like the hottest school in the country for its growth and everything. So you add those two schools into the West, then you put, uh, you know, Utah Valley, who uh, Mark Madsen was a, a world title uh, winner with, with the Lakers and, and as a coach, and you add uh, uh, Dixie State and Southern Utah, who won their conference, the Big Sky, last year, and then you got Seattle. You've got a, a, a conference from top to bottom that mm-hmm. there's no patsies. And so um, uh, it, it, it's a challenge. And, and here's the thing. It is a, a, a league that could become a multiple bid league because there's so many good teams yes. forming the league. And, and so we're all going to be fighting for, uh, you know, right now, the way things are, we're trying to get to two bid league. And I think we've got strong enough teams from top to bottom to, to make a strong case for that. And so now, um, the thing comes to scheduling and TV and all that, but I, I'm, I'm excited about this new whack and, 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 uh, I just don't want to get my teeth kicked in. Yeah. And what helps is that portal because guys want a new opportunity. You've shown that you can win and develop talent being with Frank and Martin all those years doing what you did at Austin P. So I feel like guys want to come play for you because they see like, like you did with, with Terry Taylor, how great he was playing for you. But you, so you can coach a star as well. So the, the portal's going to be good for you guys to come and get in that weather and enjoy that great edu- education and also get coached ball really, really good as well. Well, here's the thing that, that I, I kind of had and, and um, you know, becoming the new head coach here um, with the portal, as you say, um, you know, I kind of feel like I'm a GM of, of an NBA franchise because oh, yes. now, now you can start uh, picking and choosing the pieces uh, with the portal. Now, um, you know, hopefully I won't have to use it again uh, because we have added, we have used the portal to add three, two or three kids, not overly. Um, but, you know, the, the biggest accomplishment I think we've done was we're able to bring back three kids uh, who may have not have came back uh, otherwise. Um, so here's the thing. Coach Hill laid the foundation for success. It's my job to take the baton now and run with it. And, you know, we, we, we were able to, to add uh, two or three starters back from last year's team, which unfortunately with, with, with coaches passing, um, you know, that's, that's just unspeakable. Uh, uh, and, and I can't imagine what they went through. Um, but going into that, um, they were nine and four uh, when he passed and, and, and they were sitting in first place in the league. So, uh, this was the year that they thought they were going to make a run for the, for the, for the WAC championship. So, um, you know, one of the biggest thing is we've signed seven new players and I was able to uh, recruit three of the, the, the former players into coming back. So uh, right now we've got a, we've got a pretty strong nucleus of kids uh, that, that has got playing time um, in this conference. So I'm, I'm real happy with that. Uh, you know, we've not played a game yet boss man so uh right now everything looks great on paper oh yeah uh, until you get till you get lacing them up but uh oh yeah um really we're, we're really happy with with where we're at sitting in the first of may uh with with the team we've we've been able to put together uh like i said and that's all subject to change but but right now um we're, we're, we're pretty happy where we're at now what's good about this year as coach is you know you have a summertime this year because last year was no no summer with COVID, so you can't do player player development. You can't get guys stronger and knowing your system and immersing your system. So I feel like this year, being a first year head coach down there, you need this summer to have to get guys in your system, immerse them in, in the way you do things, the way Joe does strength, strength conditioning, and the key to does things. So I feel like this is gonna be very very key to get your guys ready for October when practice really starts in the fall. There. Yeah. No. No. Uh, you know, without last year, here, here's what people don't realize. You know, um, last year was a you're talking about a historical pandemic 
Uh, you know, there ha hasn't been a pandemic in the world since 1917. And, and so uh, you, it, when you get to talk, and, and, and in 1917 and, and, and 2020, you know, that is, that is a long time apart. And so uh, the world, modern technology and everything, sports, all that, all that stuff came to a halt. And so when these kids came back, you're not only talking about them not having, they, they missed five to six months of, 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 of their livelihood, which is basketball. And, and, and if you were down in the bubble when, when uh, the, the NBA came back, how bad were the guys that didn't get to put, didn't work out during that, during that pandemic? Oh, and you, and, yeah. And you they got you, injured fast. Injured, that's what I'm, what's where I'm going. Uh, so the guys who didn't work during the pandemic, didn't didn't run, didn't do their training. They came in and got hurt. They came in and 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 they they weren't a success. The, the, you know, playing basketball, man, you got to do it every day. And, and you take that time away, you know, it, it makes you rusty. And the guys that did do it, now that they excelled and 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 they helped their teams excel, and they're making more money because of it. Well, you you tie that over into the college game and you start looking at at the number of kids with injuries and stuff this year, because that played a big part in it. Um, where, you know, just the layoff of doing the, the mm -hmm. daily grind, you know, it took these kids out of the weight room. It took them out, it, 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 it took them out of uh, court time. And the biggest thing for a young man, it took away some of their identities. And I, and I know you and I spoke about this several, several months ago uh, on the show is, is that, these kids had these kids had a life in a bubble yes. where they didn't get to associate. They get to be college students. They had to stick a Q-tip up their nose three times a week, and they they didn't get to associate with their friends, their families. That's a lot of mental stress. And mm -hmm. so what what you've seen this season was chaos. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, you tell me the uh, last time Kentucky Duke. Uh, didn't make it to the NCAA tournament the same year. And, and last time, it, I think um, North Carolina got beat in the first round and, and, and stuff like that. So I probably mean, not, not in my lifetime. I'm in my 30s. Probably not in my lifetime, probably. I, I, you know, one of them, I'm 51 years old. And uh, I, I can tell you, I can tell you the one time it, since I follow basketball that Duke didn't make the NCAA tournament, that's when Coach K had a, a back surgery. And I can tell you one time or two times that Kentucky didn't make it um, at, during different eras. And that was because of, 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 of NCAA stuff or whatever. Uh, and then I think Cal one time went to the NIT. So you're talking about that, that stuff only happens in a, in a, in a rarity. Arizona didn't make it. I mean, you, you know, you're talking about things that, that, you know, that this pandemic affected. And, you know, the one thing that else also happened is there was no fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. So winning on the road became easier for a lot of yes. teams. Um, so it's just a crazy year. I want to get back to normal, man. I, I'm, I'm tired. You know, we've talked about this for, and we've made all these excuses. Let's move forward, man. It's time to get. That's time to get back to normal, man. So everybody, go get your vaccine. Yes, and I'll tell you, as coach, for me, since I'm part of the tier one, I have to wear a, like a little band, know where I go. So I'm ready for to not have to report where I go with when I go. <laughs> I feel like I'm on house arrest. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, well, the, 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 you know, the NBA, they were, um, you know, they, you have to, you have to credit the NBA now because they, they brought, they, they, they did their best to bring normalcy back to the United States. They did their part. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the National Basketball Association, they did their part, man, man to, to give us something to, to hope for. Uh, in July and August, I actually loved watching July basketball, man. August basketball, that was, it was that fun. Was, yes, it, it was very it, fun. It, it was fun, you know. Um, you know, uh, watching the Miami Heat, I loved watching Miami Heat this past year. Uh, they were, they were, they were fantastic, and and Eric Spolster showed how how really how great of a coach he was. Um, oh yes, he's never gotten the credit. You know, it's always been Pat Riley over top of everything. But last year, I think I think Eric Spolster got to show just just how creative he was, you know, and 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 it was it was a joy to watch the NBA in the bubble, man. Um, 
this past year. So I know we're talking about college basketball, but no, I don't. you good, Vic. You know, you know, you my guy, man. It's, it's all good. You know, you my guy, man. Let me ask you a question about the Miami Heat. They're one of the few teams who actually help off the strong side three. Do, do, do you love that play about the Heat? How they help off the strong side three? Because he don't want hit them in Toronto. All teams actually do it, or Boston sometimes do it. I'm I'm not a fan of it. Um, you know, I I I I will tell you this: the dribble penetration has got to the point. You, the players are just too good, and the speed of the game is just too fast. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, I, I understand it. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Um, you know, I, I think I think Milwaukee gives up a lot of threes from the strong side as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but but they're one of the best defensive teams in the league, so I guess it works. And it works out for the Heat too. Now, the Heat last year was one of the best teams defensively, and Nick Nurse is 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 a genius. So. Uh, who am I to criticize those guys? I mean, but help them from the strong side. I, 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 I don't think so because the guys, uh, um, uh, they, that shot for, now for me, if I help from the strong side, that guy's knocking it down every time. Now statistics and percentages probably tell you that you should help from the strong side and they play the, they play the odds. Uh, I just play the field game. And I know when we play, if we, we help from the strong side, when that ball gets kicked over to the corner, that's going in. Oh, yeah. And you got there right. You got there right, Fig. Yeah, that's my, one of my things about Miami Heat. The strong side of three helping off them. Like, I know when we, 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 we play them, we always put our best shooter on that side because they're going to help off the strong side anyway. So that's that. That's, but the Heat still do it, you know. I'm like, oh, and, and the Bucks. I remember Coach Bud being at the Hawks. It's packed the paint, and we'll give up threes. Yeah, that's his yeah. whole thing. Well, he don't want to give any, 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 paint, any paint points. Well, that you know, I I I have uh, when you don't have rim protection, you know, I, and and you know, I know the NBA has gone, you know, away from, you know, the the well, the Hawks have got rim protection. They got their athletic front court. I mean, Capella and Collins. I mean, those guys should be racing shots left and right. Oh yeah. But uh, um, when you don't have rim protectors, uh, you've got to give up something, and you don't want to give up. You don't want to be in rotations. Oh, yeah. You talk to any NBA coach or any coach on the planet, and they'll tell you the, the team that stays out of rotations is the team that wins. Well, it, by giving up that strong side three, you're, out of, you're, not, give, you're not in rotations. So there's, there's, a, there's an argument and a merit to it that uh, keep the ball out of the paint, make him, make him chuck it from, uh, you know, 23 feet, nine inches. Um, Most definitely. Yeah, man. Like you said, I can say, you know, watch, get in there and watch film. I love it, man. I'm, I'm a junkie. I wouldn't want to do what you do, but I love watching film. <laughs> Talk about it on the radio. I love it, man, because, like, man, you guys breaking down that tape, man, I'm like, look, I just want to talk about it. And I can pass it. I don't want to do it every day, man, but I love it so much, though. Well, you get you get so fixated on it. Um, tell you what you don't want to do is you don't want to watch it in your spare time. But I do, man, because I'm a junkie. I do. <laughs> But no, 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 you do. But when, I, when I have to watch my team every day and watch oh, yeah. my team practice and my team on film, and then I got to prepare for for uh, the next opponent, coming home on a Monday night and turning on Big Monday or, or whatever it is, I, I got I don't have much interest. Give I, me some give me some modern family or Mike and Molly or something like that. I can relax my brain, man. I hear you, man. And that's what I got for you figures is, man. Tell us about this, man. Having Nikita down at which you enjoy and guys who you worked with, Austin P, man. How cool was it bring guys who you worked with all this time, man? Been key to your success, man. Come with you down there, man. Well, it's good. I mean, uh, continuity and things like that is good. You know, also, uh, you know, two of my assistants got promoted with, with, with the move as well. Um, so my job is also helping guys get promoted. So, um, you know, my other assistants, uh, moved on to a power five job. So, um, my job as well as a head coach is not only help our players, but it's also to help my, my, my staff. And, and, and so, um, you know, but it, it's good to have, uh, these guys here that, that, that we've worked together. And, and so my biggest thing is the players got to understand that this office is, is united in one. And, um, you know, players don't, don't get it twisted, man. Players are smart. They're real perceptive. They know, even, even in, on an NBA team now, they know when there's civil war going on in that, in that, in that coach's office, they know when stuff isn't going the right way. So you've got to be a fist in everything you do. And, 
and and so having having guys that worked with me at Austin P coming here, um, that that's a that's a huge plus. Well, Phil, thank you for your time, buddy. I'm on, I told you I'm gonna miss you, man. I'm gonna be cheering for you big time, brother. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm biased. You one of my guys I like a lot, so I'm gonna be cheering for you openly. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm biased. So I'm gonna go hide that, man. I'm gonna be rocking my real grand van, real grand valley stuff, man. To cheer for you, brother. You know, you already know that, man. I appreciate you, brother. It's always a pleasure, and uh, you know, I, I soak in that that playoff experience because. Uh, when was it when uh, uh, Dan R uh, Roundfield or wh whatever his name was was playing the last time the Hawks went to the went to the playoffs? Yeah, it was. We got swept by Cleveland. LeBron's. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, you remember? You know, uh, um, the year uh, Beasley I think was a was a rookie. Uh, uh, the Hawks beat the Heat that year with Josh uh, Smith. Yes, yes, I remember that. I do. I remember that. Yeah, man. So yeah, I've suffered. Four years, Fig, of knowing you lose, lose every night, man. Now I can celebrate a playoff game, hopefully a home game here Let's at the arena, man. And we'll have about 8,000 fans here for that game as well. So hopefully it'll be a packed house for the team and cheer us on, man. Yeah, well, I, you know, the, the exciting thing is is that the, the new the new wave of players, man, there's a lot of excitement in the NBA right now. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I think, uh, um, you know, uh, playoff basketball man is the best and uh you know i i wish we would bring back some uh knicks and heat rivalries but or or or, or pistons and heat uh or pistons and knicks or pistons and bulls whatever man i, I like i like that that early 90 late 80 basketball man when when you went in for a layup and guys got clothesline i'm not i'm not saying anything but Bring back my my uh, fig is soft, man. Cool. These, these guys soft as molasses, fig. You mean you know, mm -hmm. they soft as molasses, brother. You know that it's they soft as can be, brother. They can't, they couldn't last with an oak hard foul or Charles Smith hard foul they, or a lamb beer. They, they couldn't last, man. They'll be crying like, like yeah, uh, how about how about the X Man putting you on your back? I'm giving a special shout out to <laughs> Xavier McDaniel as well. X Man, yo, yeah, he gonna take you out, man. <laughs> I remember that guy. He'll take you out. Man, Fig, hey, buddy, you be safe, man. Talk to you real soon, brother, and you be good, man. All right, man. I appreciate you guys. Anytime, buddy. Fans. All right, now.